Greetings everyone, and great here for another Age of Powers 4 replay. Spawn on the bottom side as the blue Mongols, we have War TX. Spawn on the top side as the yellow Mullions, we have I Am Magic. Let's see now, Econon Benefits. The Mullions, of course, do have access to the free resources through the mining pit. John. Which will give him a good steady flow of gold. He can take that gold and invest into cows for a more better collection rate, or get uh, invest in the cattle ranches with the cows to get a nice uh, bit of food as well. Everybody's gotta love their cheese. The Mongols do have access to the Ovo, a good counterpart to the mine pit. Provides in this age 80 stone per minute, the next age 100. Castle age 120, and I think Imperial age, never they really looked, I'm guessing 140. Additionally, they can take that stone and invest in various things, such as times two spearmen, which we see here now. But times two spearmen not being pulled in field is aiming for a bit of aggression. The mining pit's on the foot on the back side, which is a bit farther away to get around, but still out of range of the town's center arrows, so he should be some housing here. You know it's fun against the against the Mongols. He probably should have put out his housing on the, this side here, so it's easier to protect. Chance of seeing any sort of aggression is very likely. However, the Mongol still needs to scout out the uh, place in the mining pit. Spear now moving around. Got a pair of villagers here. He's maybe eyeing for a board outpost and doesn't like the fact that uh, he doesn't see proper attacking. Well, he sees the mining pit now, but decides to fall back these villagers immediately. He's like, didn't see it. Just didn't want to spend too much time with two villagers idle like that. We got a handful of Donzo to point a field. Donzo are much higher quality than Spearmen. After all, they are a unique uh, version of Spearmen. They cost uh, 10 extra wood, 60, 30, as opposed to a 60, 20. And for that higher cost, they get. One more melee armor, a javelin throw ability. Let's see, is our attack speed still the same? 1.88. 1 1.88, yep. But they still get a bit of extra armor and a powerful alpha strike javelin throw ability. So if you dance around, it's okay if the Mollings dance around, they can at least steal some javelins. We can now do not the monster core of the opponent field, which is a landmark that can either give you a little bit extra gold income or stone income. Really fits the theme of the Mollians. Now, do you have the silver tree being pulled in field? A unique Hawaiian mark, which allows him to pull out his traders for 40% less gold and 40% faster. Make it so every single trader costs 96 units of resources. He will probably need to pull the silver tree out over here and then trade this direction here. And likely the path probably go over up around this trees and down below i think yeah very likely <laughs> spearmen did try to get a bit of torches there we do have five donzo which is more than adequate to deal with five spearmen we do now the veteran donzo being researched or hardened donzo being researched now when it comes to new unique units, the Mongols have two unique units. We do have the uh, Magadai, a cavalry archer that uh, is worthless in most situations in, in most games, in which they have very little uh, purpose in the game. You would imagine the uh, the only unit to move one of the few units that can move while shooting can be incredibly powerful. The problem is they just don't have the range or damage output to really warrant it. And you got the Keshe. A cheaper uh, heavy cav in order to fight various other threats like any other heavy cav like a Royal Knights or early knights. His opponent does have a heavy cav variant as well, which does allow him to sort of engage. They're even cheaper, well, even lower quality. 
So pros and cons between those two heavy calves. And most of the mines in the lineup is very, very unique. They only have only unit they have in common are archers and the siege weapons. And that's it. Everything else they have is unique, so it's hard to say whether or not what unit he should will go for. If the Mongols will go, it all depends on the Mong what the Mongols go for, and the Mongolian player will probably counter. If, go, if the Mongol player goes for Sophos or for Warrior Scouts, then, it's more, then the Mongols will probably just go for Kashyyyk in return. Do we have a silver trade right there? Not going for max trade. This right here will probably net him about 50 gold per trip, I'm assuming. Assuming he gets all his trade bounty. Not trade bounty, Silk Road. Scouting Eagle deployed on the field, very nice. Line of Palisade walls going on up here. Trying to close the area. Grab the takes up the con there. Got hard of Spearman and some pair of parts not pull out of the field. Spearman, of course, are counter to the Donzo. Does destroy all those walls there with a single torch throw. Very nice. And do have a pair of Keshiks out on the field as well. Do you have one cattle ranch fully filled, two more available for cows. He does have plenty of sheep here for food collection. Ah, he may be running a little bit low, honestly. I see a couple sheep remaining. Cows now being employed on the field. Blacksmith going on up, and he's really eyeing to grab this gold here. Based on the cow placement there, he's probably going to go for Fra uh, Grand Fulani Corral. Though he could eye for the uh, Fambia Garrison. Oh, looks like there's these berries parched in the way. He will need to get out a mill up here and start collecting up these berries. Good damage there on those Kashyyyks. Another Khan has risen. More cows being employed on out. Actually, there's a good number of cows so just idle here. He doesn't have enough room for all the cows. If he wants, if he wants a nice food storage there in Age of Empires 4, these carcasses do not degrade in food like in other, like in 2 and 3. So you can always pop them later and then have a nice little uh, back uh, storage of cows. At least food there to be obtained. Does pull three of the cows over here in the cattle ranch. Very nice. You may just like to take time and bop this cow. Not currently building any more cows at the moment. Yeah, maybe he's not going to go for the Grand Falana Corral. And maybe sign to for maybe five cattle ranches and I the rest for food. Scout does go down there. We got a good number of jab throwers in part of the Donzo point field. Tom Donzo will be very useful versus these 
cash tricks, while the javelin throwers will be accounted to the archer. Archer, of course, accounts to Donzo, and javelin throwers, they have high base damage, so they will be able to provide some good fire support against Keshex. Keshex do get plus some pierce armor. Javelin throwers do have a higher base damage of 8, so they're up to 9 damage at the moment as well. So they will do 5 damage per arrow uh, javelin, as opposed to potentially 2 damage per arrow by the archers. They do attack the same speed as crossbows, which is slightly slower than archers. But overall, the DPS versus Keshex will still be higher, so Donzo, Javelin Throw is probably a good composition. Mixing some most fighting warriors will be an anti-armor specialist. However, Spearn will do that job just as well, and both get equally countered by archers. Mongol spearmen, however, are not being directly counsel countered. Arden Donzo do have, of course, plus one pierce armor. They do also have a little bit higher health as well. Now there's a Grand Flani Corral. And looks like he has put out a good number of cows in there. He may have one too many cattle ranches. Extra to see a bit of damage there. Donzo now gauging. See a bit of damage there. Jam throws trying to try pursue get those jam throws there with the Keshix. Archers just need to pursue those Donzo. Keshix now engaging. He sees the next age going on up. Okay, so Donzo as well. He's still just going to be able to fall back down so that the Landlord has plenty of health to work around with. The Donzo just now firing around with 10 extra arrows. And also the Mongols are just still moving around, trying to find some other villagers there. We'll pursue these ones. He has killed off 12 villagers at the moment. And the traders are in good numbers on the field. We should take a look to see how much in money they're bringing on, on in per run. Almost is now depleted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, one too many cattle ranches. You can only have 20 cows, so three. And you can only have, so, uh, and each cattle ranch holds up to three, so you need seven to get potential up to 21. Or in this case, 20. So, one too many cattle ranches there. Cattle ranches are on 100 wood, so they're relatively cheap, and so I don't want to waste resources like that. And now do have a pretty good spike in food income. There's some bought cows over here still being collected on up. Not getting, didn't get a whole lot of extra dons though, just on the one moment. Down throw is Sutter's second round. And the archers is giving some good general damage here. Mongols have not aged up just yet. Has had the towns that are firing as well. You could actually throw these these villagers against the town center, took a bit of damage there. Ground throws could just get inside the town center as well. You know the less damage in there, they'll be at least be protected. Now do got a big number of sales coming out on the field. He may be eyeing for sofas. Or for veteran warrior scouts. Vet warrior scouts don't get any bonus damage versus range, but veteran warrior scouts do get the bonus damage versus range. They don't have any inherent pierce armor though. So either is a possibility at the moment. His opponent right now is to play out more archers, more Keshex. So I think mass veteran warrior scout may be better than Sofa's. Sofa's of course much heav heavier armor. We've got another Pearl Tide on being flown field. We do not have some Sofa's being flown field. Now going for the veteran sofa research as well. Does not have the important armor being researched. Does have enough resources for it. Give them plus two plus two armor. Sofas do also do bonus versus infantry. But the damage is like plus two and three. Something very small. Plus three against infantry. Another mining pit tenting being built, but will be interrupted. Uh, yeah, he will be interrupted. Mining player did lose a good number of civilians, lost 20, which is massive. 
Akon does get focused down there. Very good. Akon, I think, does technically receive bonus damage from these javelin doors as they are anti-range. Does say range infantry, just says anti-range. So the con is classified as range. So javelin throws are a good way to snipe him. Let's see this trader. Each one's providing 44, so I think it's actually four. Yeah, he does have the golden con is not that great at 44, but still he has a good number of them and has a good job of killing off his opponents, uh, civilians. But some of these sofas will go or will take out some traders. Oh, well, Keshuk's here. Veteran Keshuk's are still higher quality than uh, veteran sofas. The base damage of Keshuk's is actually slightly smaller. Huh. I'm mistaken. Keshuk's cost 200. Sofas do cost 180. Of course, uh, Keshuk's do have higher attack speed and have the charge attack. So yeah, I think the Ketchik Star is better, only by a slight amount. Curl Tide advance on forward. This Curl Tide could be focused down. Forest Puppers do get spotted there. It doesn't kill any of them off. And also as well, Sofas do have little less armor. And they have three base armor plus the veteran Ketchik's four. Where is there's a veteran Keshex? But the plus two plus two armor, they'll get up to five. No, the veteran Keshex does get a bit of health per swipe, so they will win on 1v1, but only by a small margin. Krolltai not being focused down. If he's completely surrounded, the Krolltai can be destroyed. Catch is getting a little bit overwhelmed. Do have some now crossbows to a few, which is a good way to hit those veteran sofas. There's a good health regen right there. Right now the Mongol army is much larger than the Malians, and he has more than double civilian count. He has almost twice the population on the field as well. Cash is now spawning down south to engage. And his opponent as well with the silver tree. It's a double-edged sword. You have no way to keep your traders secure if you assume you don't deploy out garrison. At this point in time, you may want to get out a small group of spirits on each side of these trader posts. It just lost a good number of traders there. These sofas not pushed away forward. That's gonna get a hit there. Thanks to the Yam network, these uh cavalry can move much faster to engage. And the traders of course move faster hard to escape. That one does still go down as well. So got a good number of uh, veteran sofas here. Archers down the field. Mm, he is going for poison arrows. I'm not a big fan of poison arrows. This doesn't seem like it doesn't really make a much difference. It's good damage over time, free damage over time. But the problem is, it's over time and not immediate. Looks like the Imam will be focused down. Yellow's picked up three relics. Blue has not touched any of their relics, which may have been an oversight. This relic could be claimed by Blue. Sofa's now going to hit the trade line. Blue's not lining for a counterattack. He does have siege engineers. He can pass out some uh, better rams. He will lose a good number of traders. And if he doesn't win the game now, he's going to lose the game outright because he's going to lose a good number of traders himself. He's losing a good number of civilians. Carl Tai now deployed right there. Maganel put on the field, which does do plus damage to structures. 
Sounds like it has no extra arrows at the moment. They got the Nelly Soldiers, so far are falling them back. He can't do a mutual base race because the prototype is in his, own, in his own base. Prototype's been floated out there, which will give him good health regen and damage buffs. Catrix now advancing forward, has a good number of uh, crossbows here as well. Maganel, he pursued. It does get healed up by the Pearl Tie. Catrix and Pearl and uh, Sofa Tonic each other, but I think the Catrix should win out. Takes increased damage and the increased health regen and health per swipe. And that is the end of the replay. This is Anne Great saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.